anything. I can say that this cat was rare, but I thought, man, forget it. Yo, home the Bel Air. What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mode IJ, and we are locked in. This is the recap for Bel Air episode four. And again, they dropped three episodes, so we got four, five, and six this week. And man, let me tell you, episode four, we seen Will and Carlton going back to their old ways of season one, and they're clashing. But they got to get through this because the whole theme is black access, black access. And we need to work together because when we work against each other, we got to work two times as harder just to get back to where we were. Now, before we jump into this and we break down episode four, if you like Bel Air, live after show discussions, tune in tomorrow night, Friday night. I'm going to say about 2 p.m. Eastern for the after show of Bel Air, episodes four or five or six. Then you're at the right spot. Hit your subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. And I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. We need a little up under 400, and we're right there. But that's enough talking for me. Let's jump into episode four and see if LaMarcus is going to make a recovery. Right after the scrimmage last week where LaMarcus, he had to be taken off the field in the stretcher, we're at the hospital. Everyone's running around. They're frantic. They're trying to figure out what's next, what's going to happen. Because they said his heart stopped out there on the field. Now, the Alton family, this is LaMarcus's family, they showed up. Of course, the Banks family showed up, and everyone is giving support to Hillary. Now, fortunately, Aunt Viv does come out and say that they removed LaMarcus from ICU, so at least he's in a stable condition. Back at the house, we know Uncle Phil, he's going through some things because it's been exposed that Erica kissed him. And Erica ended up telling Viv. Now, Viv stayed at the hospital and her and Phil have been distant. He's about to have a drink. But when Carlton comes in, he doesn't want to be drinking in front of his son because we know that Carlton, he's just now getting back from rehab. Now, he's asking about Viv and he's saying, well, she's at work and I got a few things that I got to get prepared for. How are you doing with this meeting with Q? And Carlton's like, uh, it's all right. We're going to make it happen. So they both got to get ready for their big day. Because we know that Phil's trying to branch out. Carlton ends up taking a urinalysis test for his dad to show him that, hey, I haven't been on drugs and I haven't been drinking since I've been back. Will's getting prepared for the meeting with Q. And of course, Jeffrey, the silent assassin, he's walking around and he stalks Will down and he asks him a few questions. And Will's like, well, me and Carlton, we got to get prepared. We got to get up out of here. Jeffrey says, well, real quick, let me ask you a couple of questions. Was Frederick involved in anything the other night when I picked you up? He's talking about the drag racing. And Will's saying, no, nothing that I can think of. And Jeffrey's like, are you sure? Of course, Will doesn't want to say anything because they were illegally drag racing. So he's like, nah, I ain't got nothing, but I got to go, G. And you know Jeffrey, he can sense that something is off. Aunt Viv, she leaves the hospital. She has to head off to work. Now, when she's here, she has a lot on her mind. Because she's also thinking about the new artist that painted that mural on the side of the building. Now, this lady's name is Destiny. And, of course, her friend is like, well, if you think that she should be the next person to be the intern over here, Viv, this is your opportunity. That's why they gave you this job. Now, with this stressor, LaMarcus being in the hospital, she does tell her friend, also, Erica, she kissed Phil. And there's a lot of drama going on at the house. So now her friend knows about the problems that she's having outside of work. At the hospital, Hillary goes in there once LaMarcus finally wakes up and you can tell that he's very, very weak. Now he does tell her that all his life he has had a heart problem. So now it's just now being exposed. She's feeling sorry and LaMarcus is also asking, what did you want to talk to me about before the incident happened? And of course, she's definitely not about to tell him that she kissed Jazz while he's in the hospital. His heart might stop again, and it might not start back up. But in comes LaMarcus's dad. Now, he's a former football player also, and the only thing he can think about is being positive and getting his son back on the field. Now, Hillary is sensing that this is more of his dad's dream than actually LaMarcus. So LaMarcus is not prepared to get back on that field. Now it's time for the big meeting with Quentin. Quentin has all these young, black, and gifted entrepreneurs in here for a meeting to start presenting their ideas because he's going to be putting them in front of investors. And of course, we have a young lady that she has a wastewater nonprofit organization. We have another gentleman that developed an app. And then we have Black Sess between Will and Carlton. Now, when they get up here, as of right now, all they have 
It's just the t-shirts, but these are prototypes. Now, when they're up here, everyone starts asking questions. No one asked anyone else questions. That's probably because everyone's been working on this for a while. But when they start asking the questions, Will doesn't know much about the business side. Carlton is answering them, and Will is just saying, well, you know, we got inventory, and um, we'll get the inventory, and when we find out, we'll let you know. But this is big business, and Quentin is saying that this isn't good enough, and you can see Carlton is upset about Will's answers. So after the meeting that they bombed, great concept, but they bombed the presentation. They're trying to figure out when can they get their inventory. So Carlton and Will, they go and talk to Jazz because it's his homeboy that hooked them up with these t-shirts. Now, he's not texting back. He's not responding to phone calls. Jazz said he does his own thing. But trust me, you'll get your product. Now, Carlton is saying, listen, Will, you need to handle this. If you are in charge of apparel, then you need to be on top of this. We don't need to be wondering when our inventory is going to come in. And Will's like, I got it. I got it. And we slowly see more of a divide between these two in business. Phil and Jeffrey are out on the range getting some strokes in. That's wild. But they also start talking about everything that's going on. And we know that Phil has been letting Jeffrey have a little more leeway and start dealing with his son also. But he does bring up the fact that Erica told Viv about the kiss and that's messing up a few things. But then Uncle Phil is also talking about separating completely away from Erica. Now, this is where Jeffrey comes into play because, remember, he was the one to tell Phil about Omar and the new development. Now, he's saying that it's going to be dirty and messy because the people don't want the location to be gentrified. But Uncle Phil, he's saying this is what we built Phillip Banks and Associates for, to get dirty, to get messy, and to do this work. So Phil is about to go overtime to try to get this new client. Hillary is still at the hospital and Jazz ends up showing up. Now we know that Hillary likes Jazz and she was about to tell LaMarcus about the kiss, but now it's like she feels sorry for LaMarcus, so she isn't gonna say anything about it and just stick by his side. Jazz ends up showing up to the hospital and he has some food that his parents made. And then he starts apologizing to Hillary again about that night where she kissed him. I never understood why Jazz continues to apologize for this, but these were Hillary's decisions, and she even admitted that to Ivy. But he ends up having to leave because Jazz, he pulled up to the hospital to tell Hillary that he's sorry with another woman. And that right there kind of stung Hillary in the heart. So Jazz leaves, and it has Hillary wondering what it could have been. Will and Carlton have their spat, and they go back and forth. And out of nowhere, Lisa pops up to the house and she's saying she has an off day and it's a beautiful day to go to the beach. So her plan is her and the mirror are going to go on a double date with Carlton and Will and take them down to the beach. And this will be good because these two were clashing over their business. And the mirror and Lisa, they're starting to get close. So why not? Friends take out, you know, their boyfriends. But when they get here, Carlton and Will, they go off and do their own thing. But the girls are trying to get them to reconnect so they can squash their little issue and handle business. Well, Uncle Phil said he was going to get messy, so he went down to ground zero where they're trying to build the shopping center. Now, you remember Yolanda, she's running for city council here, and she's saying gentrification isn't the way to go. They already can't afford stuff here. Now, Omar comes out and he kind of makes a mishap and starts speaking about I'm the only person investing. So Uncle Phil comes up here and he clears the airways and like, listen, I know you didn't hire me, but let me clean this up for you. And Uncle Phil is saying, you're going to be able to benefit from this because Omar is making sure that money is going to go into black people's pockets from the lowest level to the highest level. And now I am representing Omar. So this is going to be a monumental step for Phillip Banks and Associates. And hopefully the community can get with it or they can turn against Philip Bank. Well, the girls, they decided to do some 2v2 in beach volleyball. Everyone loves some beach volleyball. Girls versus boys. We got a little drink. Well, they can't drink because of Carlton. And they get out there. And Will and Carlton aren't on the same page. I'm talking about 5-0, 8-0. Then they talking about game point. They running into each other, arguing. The girls, 
They go ahead, set it up. They get it over the net. I'm thinking, okay, we about to get it. Will's talking about, I got it, I got it. Carlton talking about, I got it. They run into each other. They lose the game. The girls win. I think they said 15-0. I've never seen anyone get beat this bad. And Carlton and Will, well, they go their separate ways. Aunt Bib decides to have a ladies' night out. Oh, yes, it's ladies' night. And the feel is right. So they hit the town. Uncle Phil was a little bit jealous. Like, where are you going in this time? She said, I need to get out from the house. They pull up to the bar. They grabbing some drinks. I'm thinking they're about to get bottle service. But they said, nah, let's kick it. Like, we 21 again. They straight at the bar. Tequila shots. And they having a good old time. And one of their friends comes. And she's trying to turn them up. They need more shots. And, well, most shots lead straight to the dance floor. And out on the dance floor, they getting crazy. Don't need no player hate and holleration in this dancery. I'm talking about I ain't know Aunt Viv had this loose side tour. Well, when you want that 42, that 1942, anything goes. And they out here having the time of their lives. Because no matter how old you are, every now and then you got to pop out and show people. You still know how to have a good time. Aunt Viv even got some guys trying to dance up on her. I said, okay, look at Viv. Now, Will is still trying to comprehend how can he make this business work with Carlton if they're beefing. Now, he wants to know the business side because that's what Carlton's specialty and expertise is in. Will is more of the people person. Get out, do the marketing and the networking. So him and Lisa, they decide to study a little bit on the beach. Every question he gets right, they take something off. Well, he gets two of them right, and, uh, well, a uh, little more than two pieces of clothing gets taken off, and they get a little distracted. This is Will Smith being Will Smith, and this is why we call him the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Now, Viv, they're here chilling, had a little bit too much to drink, and you got to relax it off. Now, her friend ends up bringing the chef, Sharif. Now, all the girls know about Sharif now, so they even go to his Instagram. And the turn up friend, she ends up liking some pictures. So, of course, we know that this is going to end bad. It's going to make Sharif get the wrong idea and the wrong impression that maybe Aunt Viv is showing back the same interest that he is. So, you know, the ladies start having their conversations back and forth about going to beat up Erica. The only problem is they're too drunk and they can't feel their feet. So they'll do it next week. Everyone leaves the beach because Carlton has to be home. He got a curfew. Will and Lisa, they might still be out there doing whatever they do. Now, when they're driving home, Amira's like, hey, I know you got a lot of stuff on your mind, but let's just chill. And Carlton's talking about, man, I might need to, to relapse. I might need to get me a hit. I might need a drink. And she's like, nah, let's do something else. Because when you were street racing, I wish it was you driving. So now she's telling Carlton to go faster and faster and stare at her instead of looking at the road. And, well, one thing leads to another. Carlton is speeding, and, well, they're doing what you shouldn't be doing while you're driving because it's very, very dangerous. Carlton gets home with 10 minutes to spare, and he's looking at his door, wishing he could close his door and get some privacy. But as of right now, he's been holding strong. He hasn't relapsed. He hasn't taken any drugs or drank anything. Jeffrey comes in. And he feels like it's too much holding in the truth. So he ends up telling Jeffrey that the night he came and picked them up, him and Will were actually drag racing. And Jeffrey is like, I knew something was off. But he doesn't mention anything. And then Carlton also gets ready to bring up Frederick. But Jeffrey cuts him off and says, listen, whatever's going on with Frederick, you let me handle that. Thank you for being honest. And that's what being a man is about. Not lying and telling the truth. Will is really trying to study up to figure out how can he learn the business side. Now, of course, you got to take baby steps. Carlton's been doing this since he was very, very young. And Carlton uses the analogy. It's just like me going out and playing basketball. I couldn't just go out there and dunk on nobody. And, of course, Will makes a short joke and say, or maybe never dunk. But what they're talking to each other is like men. Communication rules the nation. And they understand they both have their strong points. In order for this to work, we got to use my strengths and bring them with your strengths. And my weaknesses, you pick up my weaknesses just like your weaknesses, I'll pick them up. So these two, they dap each other up and they're like, cool. And in the background, we hear a horn honking. The only issue is when the 
horn honks, they go downstairs, and it's a van. Now, this van pulls up with 20 boxes. 20 boxes with 50 t-shirts in each. That's a 1,000 shirts. Now, they got seven days to pay this. And they're like, how are we going to sell 1,000 shirts? Well, this is what happens when you get the hookup. You get a larger amount, a larger quantity than you're really prepared for. And Will says, we don't have to sell 1,000 shirts. We only have to sell 999 of them because they end up giving the driver one because he's like, man, that's a dope logo. Black says, the last thing we see is Jeffrey going into Frederick's room. Now, in the beginning of the episode, Will didn't give up any information. At the end, we've seen Carlton say, I don't want to come between you and Frederick, but there's something I have to say. Jeffrey wants to figure it out on his own. Now, he goes in the room. Frederick's taking a shower. He starts searching everything, going through the drawers, looking up under the bed, checking pants pockets. When he gets to the book bag, he finds out that there's a burner phone in there. And there's a lot of missed calls from a country code of plus four two. Now, the country code for the UK is plus four four. Plus four two is the Czech Republic. So who exactly is Frederick contacting? All right, there you go. The recap for episode four. Let me know what you think about Black Seth. Are they going to be able to turn this thing around? And also, is LaMarcus going to get back on that field like his dad wants? Or is he going to take it easy? And then the big question. Who the heck is Frederick contacting about his father? Let me know what you think. This is the recap for episode four. Tune in tomorrow for episode five. And then the day after that, which should be Saturday, episode six recap of Bel Air season four. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Roll to 50,000 subscribers. We need about 400. Thanks for watching. I'm out.